Hello and welcome to Colonial Michelin Mackinac. My name is Leanne and today we wanted to look at one of our backyard gardens and see what some of the civilians were planting here at the fort. The fort was organized very interestingly. Um, there were many row houses which are very long buildings that were subdivided into individual units sort of like a modern condo building. All those houses would have had a main living space, an attic, some of them had cellars and they all had some sort of outdoor space. So these are the sort of backyard garden gardens that we are going to be looking at. This garden is planted up with plants of the sort that you would see growing in some of our small backyard gardens at Michilimackinac. We have a wide variety of lettuces and herbs and things, whatever was important for that household in particular. We sort of compare the 18th century gardening at Michilimackinac to the way that a modern gardener gardens especially if you are limited on space, you grow very much what's just important to you. Things like tomatoes in 2020, peppers and cabbages, um, cucumbers, those sorts of things are most popular in modern gardens. And we see folks at Michelin Mackinac again, purchasing the bulk of their food and then just growing the things that were very special to them. So in our garden here, we have a couple of herbs. Um, one of them is mint, very common. I know a lot of people have a lot of feelings about mint. It does spread, um, but in the 1700s, they're cooking with it, um, especially using it with peas. It uh, brightens the flavor, I would say. Um, they're also using it in sauces. And of course, we all know that mint tea can help settle a, a upset tummy. Um, they're also growing things like lavender, another of our herbs that serves in multiple ways in the colonial kitchen. You can use it to cook, especially with beef. It helps bring out the flavor. Lavender is also lovely with sweet things. So if you think of uh, shortbread, you can add a little bit of lavender in there for a bit of variety. Um, lavender was also recommended by one 18th century author to uh, calm a fussy baby, you should bathe it in lavender water. So our lavender does really well here. We have very sandy, poor soil and it grows and grows and grows. Um, we literally do nothing to it and it does great. So uh, the lavender, the mint, those are just two of the herbs in our garden. Um, we also have a few vegetables. So we're going to look at a couple of those. When we're looking at the sort of vegetables that are being grown in these small backyard gardens, um, we know that for the French and the British people coming here, they wanted something that would keep producing. Root vegetables are fabulous and very useful, and we know they're being grown, but lots of leafy greens were also being grown. One of the travelers that came to Michelin Mackinac said that they were able to grow some greens here. So we're looking at the types of greens that they're growing. Uh, in the 1700s, commonly you would see spinach and um, you would see Swiss chard. We know that they're also growing kale. People have a lot of opinions about kale, but it was a good vegetable in the 18th century for the garden because it keeps producing throughout the season. It typically does not bolt or go to seed, and so you can continue harvesting from it. At Michelin Mackinac, we have a lot of challenges when it comes to gardening, one of them being the season. Um, right now in the fall, it's starting to cool down. This plant will actually keep growing until November or possibly even December without any covering. So very cold hardy, a very good vegetable for a northern climate. We also grow a lot of onions in these gardens. The onions, leeks, shallots, those are quite common in backyard gardens. Um, there's a, a fur trader here in the 1770s named John Askin, and he specifically writes down that he's growing onions, shallots, and leeks. We have planted giant musselberg or muselberg leeks in our garden here. There's a little bit of a row. They're kind of floppy, but um, that's okay. They'll still, still be fine. These are a biannual and the first year, at the end of the first year, is usually when you harvest them. These are second year leeks, and that's why they have flowers on them. These flowers are going to turn into seeds, and we will collect the seeds from them for planting the garden next year. 
a lot of our vegetables that we have here are varieties that are quite difficult to get. Um, they're varieties that are special to our site and so we want to keep them going and seed saving is the best way to do that. 18th century gardeners would have absolutely practiced seed saving as well. By collecting seed from your plants you can improve them over time. Your vegetables will end up more acclimated to your growing conditions, your soil quality, um, and you can select specific qualities in your plants. So these leeks, while they are not good to eat right now, they will be useful um, because they're producing their seeds for us for planting next year. These are just two of the vegetables in our garden. We do have a couple more that we can look at. Uh, we also have some beans planted in this little garden. Quite often in the 1700s, since there's no canning, instead of harvesting all of our green beans in one go when they're fresh and young and tender, which we certainly will harvest some of them um, and use in immediately, we quite often let them go until the pods are dry and crispy, and then we'll shell them and then the beans will keep for years. So with no freezing, with no ball jars or mason jars in the 18th century, keeping dried beans is one of the easiest ways to have a good solid food source throughout the winter. In this garden, we again do have quite a lot of different things planted, just like in many of the small backyard gardens throughout the fort. Um, the beans are doing really well and right next to them we have a whole row of cabbages. Now our cabbages are experiencing quite a lot of pest damage right now. In the 18th century garden you're limited on the types of chemicals that you can use. Folks, you, folks did have access to things like slaked lime, sometimes we see them using tobacco juice to control pests, but um, the main method is really just manual removal. So that means that we need to get out here and start looking for bugs. And I don't see any right now, but guaranteed I'm going to poke around in here a little bit this afternoon and see if I can find some. We'll pick those bugs off, throw them in a bucket of soapy water, um, and then have to do it again the next day. So gardening in the 18th century without modern chemicals means that it's a bit more labor intensive in some instances, specifically when dealing with the cabbage loopers on our cabbages. Well, gardeners did not have chemicals like we do in 2020 to deal with garden pests, they did have a lot of methods that were tried and true for dealing with other garden issues, specifically the weather. Um, we do have a relatively short growing season at Michelin Mackinac compared to places like the American South, where you can grow essentially year round. Um, up here we can grow year round, but we have to help our plants along. So we were very lucky to have gotten a number of bell jars, which is what these glass domes are called. Um, sometimes you'll also see them called cloches. Under these bell jars, we have beets planted. The beets are probably going to do well because these bell jars are giving them just a bit of protection from the cold weather, as well as the wind that we have here. Other protective measures that gardeners could take at this time period were building hot beds, which are basically pits filled with manure. As the manure decomposes, it produces heat. You can put dirt over that manure that warms up uh, again as the manure decomposes and plant on top of that. It's the same idea as using a modern heating mat for seed starting. Gardeners in the 18th century might also be using paper row covers. Um, there are cold frames which are kind of like mini greenhouses as well so they had a lot of different methods. We have these bell jars here in our garden thanks to our Mackinac Associates group if you are interested in learning more about how to support our gardens and how to support Mackinac Associates, please do visit our website. <laughs> Thank you for coming on a tour of one of our backyard kitchen gardens with me. Come and visit us in 2021 to see what is growing next.